right under the gun, the Orioles added their starting pitching help. This is continued coverage of the Locked On MLB trade deadline. I'm Jeff Carr, channel manager for Locked On MLB, and alongside me is Connor Newcomb from Locked On Orioles, and the Orioles just got their arm. They have been rumored to be in the trade market for any starting pitcher that was rumored to be available, and they got Jack Flaherty from the St. Louis Cardinals. Heading to St. Louis is infield prospect Cesar Prieto and pitching prospect Drew Rom, Connor, when you first heard this trade was going down, what was your initial reaction? It was relief, especially because the trade came in around 5.55. Um, and now we know, you know, as we're speaking here, some deals are still coming in because they usually trickle in about a half hour after the deadline. But that's still like right up to the wire. And with the Orioles having to send Tyler Wells down to double A a couple days ago because his arm's been so tired, they like needed a starter. It wasn't like, Hey, the Orioles should upgrade. They needed a starter and they weren't doing anything. Starter after starter was going off the board. So the first reaction was just like, okay, they got a legitimate major league starting pitcher. Let's breathe. And then look into, okay, what was the actual deal? How does he help the Orioles? And this comes one year after the Orioles just went through the deadline that they had last year where they decided to sell pieces, even though they were in a, a a position to contend. This year really seems like everything is starting to come together even more so than last year. So this kind of a move only has to send amazing vibes to not only your fan base, but also the team in the locker room. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the O's could have done more and, you know, reporters enticing Orioles fans, connecting them to Justin Verlander all day. Um, and they didn't go get another bullpen piece, which they probably could have used. But it's nice to see that, one, they traded for a major league player who's going to help them, gave away prospects, and B, didn't even do the thread the needle thing, you know, where they like traded one major leaguer away and then acquired another major leaguer in two separate deals. Like, even though they made two moves, because Fujinami was still a deadline move, even though it was two weeks ago. They made two moves and both were buyer moves. So it's really nice to see that after an offseason where, yeah, the Orioles didn't do a lot, but they were, I guess, buyers because they went out and got Cole Irvin and signed a couple major league free agents. And then they were buyers again at the deadline. It tells you, OK, at least the front office is mostly bought in to making this team better. You know, if it is incrementally, it sometimes is, but. That's that's better than the thread and the needle, and it's better than than last deadline, like you talked about. You know, trading away from the major league team when they were right in the wild card picture. Every sellers, uh, every selling team's fan base favorite team to look at was the Baltimore Orioles because of the girth of prospects that they have in their system. Are you surprised that the, the deal went down and, and, and you're looking at the two guys that you had with the way that the starting pitching market had gone? Like, do you look at this and you say, boy, that, that was an overpay or, or how are your feelings about the return? Yeah, I feel like in another year, you could call it a slight overpay, but seeing what even the rental starters were going for, you mentioned Michael Lorenzen. I mean, I had heard about what the Tigers were asking the Orioles for Michael Lorenzen. And it was more than this, like more than they, mm. in terms of the, the player, the, the top player in the deal. And so right. looking at it and saying, you know, Flaherty probably has a higher ceiling than Michael Lorenzen. So I do kind of like this deal. Now it is interesting, you know, what they give up. Prieto's kind of a like poor man's Luis Arise, basically. Like he doesn't strike out. He doesn't walk. He puts everything in play and he's hitting over 300 in triple A. But you may have noticed the Orioles have about a million good infield prospects. So even <laughs> though Prieto's good, there was not really a path for him. Drew Rahm used to be the Orioles' best pitching prospect, not named Grayson Rodriguez. He's really struggled in AAA this year, so it was kind of time for the O's to move on. The thing I say about Rahm is if he were pitching better, he'd be on the Orioles right now. There's a reason he's still in AAA. And then it's kind of interesting right now as we talk. So one Orioles reporter, Rock Kabaka, who knows the team well, reported that there's a third piece in the deal, which is a 19-year-old Zach Showalter, who the Orioles drafted out of high school last year kind of a, a young right-handed pitcher with good stuff, but really, really raw guy in low A. No one else has corroborated that report, including Jeff Passan, who just tweeted out deals official and didn't include him. That does make it hurt a little more only because he had some promise. But then you sit back and you go, he's 19. He's raw in low A. The O's weren't seeing him for three plus years. Even if he does become a good pitcher for the Cardinals in 2027, I don't care if Jack Flaherty helps the Orioles in 2023. 
And that's really where the balance comes from around the trade deadline, right? Especially when you're a team that prides itself on developing from within, drafting, and, and, and basically the bulk of your team is players that have come up through your organization. So there was probably a lot of pride there that the Baltimore front office had to work through itself even to make this one deal. I, I kind of feel like it's very desirable for most other fan bases looking at the Orioles as a trade partner. So it probably surprised them that the Orioles didn't make more moves because it's easy to be like, well, we've got all of this, all of these chips that we could just push into the center of the table. But once again, the Orioles kind of relented from doing that, but at least they pushed a few chips in there. Yeah. At least they did something. And listen, like this is, no doubt a top five farm system in baseball. And, and many people think it's number one. Yep. And these were at most places, three of their top 20 prospects. Now, the funny part is all three of these guys, most people would rate like somewhere in between 12 and 20. So they didn't give up any other top 10 guys. They didn't give up anybody who's been named to a top 100 list anywhere. And mm -hmm. so they still have a lot of talent, but I think the Cardinals can feel good in that. Hey, we got three players who like Prieto and Rom could both play in the big leagues this year for the Cardinals. And they got kind of a lottery ticket, interesting 19 year old pitcher. So it feels like a win-win at this point. And actually the Orioles just announced the trade and show Walter was involved as well. So it was three players, but either way, I think kind of a win-win for both sides. And yeah, would I've liked the Orioles to push it in more and see Dylan Cease or Justin Verlander in an Orioles uniform. Absolutely. But this was a nice step forward for a team that people can't still believe it, but like, they're in first place in the best division in baseball. Well, it's it's fun to see that they have added to the rotation, added to their playoff candidacy, and covering the Orioles every single day will be Connor Newcomb on Lockdown Orioles as they try to make a return to the playoffs. Connor, thank you. Thank you.